In this lesson, we're going to continue working on our first flip chart. And we're going to stick with the science theme, but we want to start with a brand new page. So let's go ahead and create one. Inside of Active Inspire, if you want to create a new page, all you need to do is come over to the Previous and Next Page buttons and just go ahead and click on it. So I'm going to click on Next Page to create a page after the life cycle of a butterfly. And notice I get a blank page. Now just to verify that this did create the page where I want it, I can go over to our page resources, the page browser, and I can click on the page browser and notice at the very bottom you see I have my life cycle of butterfly page and I have a blank page that now I can begin working with. Okay, so let's begin working. The first thing we need to do is decide what will be on this page. And for a second, I'm going to imagine that we're doing a review lesson on scientific names of animals. In this flip chart page, I'm going to ask the students to come up and select an animal and tell me the scientific name. We'll then click on the image and have the scientific name appear. So let's get started with that. First thing I need to do is pull in graphics. And again, Active Inspire comes with built-in images, so we're going to use those. So I'm going to go to Resources. I'm going to click on my up arrow and go to My Resources. Under Subjects, I'll click on General. And now I've got a section for animal. So I'm just going to choose animals. And I'm going to choose photographs so that I get some realistic looking photographs. All right, now it's time to choose our photographs. So for the first photograph, I'm just going to choose this elephant. So I'm going to drag it up onto the screen. Then using the select tool, I'm going to click on the circle with the line through it. And I'm just going to shrink this image to a size that I like. So for now, this will work. Now I can come back and resize this at any point in time. So we'll just leave it like this for now. I'm going to come over and close this resource browser just because it's in my way. And I'll choose another photo. So the next one, I'm just going to click the arrow here to see what else is available. I like this swan, so I'm going to pull the swan out. And again, I'll shrink it up a little bit. That looks pretty good. Now I'll go find another image. Let's bounce around here. Yeah, let's go back. And let's choose the chicken. So we'll choose a chicken. Shrink it. And finally, I will choose the clownfish. Add that. And we'll shrink this up as well. Okay, so now all I need to do is get my spacing and sizing about where I want it. So I'm just going to adjust these sizes until I'm happy with them. That looks pretty good. Pull this image down. Actually, let's swap the locations of these two images. I'm going to click this one over here, and we'll just slide this one over. And again, I'll click and I'll shrink the image up and I'll pull it down a little bit. Okay, maybe I'll actually even slide this over to here. There. I like the way that looks for now. Okay, now maybe I don't want my background to be white, so I can change the color. So I'll click on my fill. I'll choose a color and let's say let's choose a color from inside of here so I'll just right click I'll come over and I'll choose my eyedropper and we could choose any color we like maybe I'll go with this brown this time and my initial reaction was to do a, an orange color mmm the brown does not look any good at all so let's right click again and we'll do the eyedropper and maybe we'll go with black. We'll try that out. Again, I'm not liking it. So I could play around with these colors. 
until I find something that looks okay to me. Mm. And when in doubt, go back to white. Well, we'll just leave it like this for now. Okay, so now I have my images in here. I'm gonna go over to my object browser. Notice I've got all my photos included. They're in the middle layer, and I've got clownfish, chicken, swan, and elephant. I'm just going to double click and just rename these just to the name of the animal. So we'll just double click. Now I'll say this is a chicken. And all I'm doing is double clicking and I'm highlighting after the name of the animal backwards, pressing the delete key. So again, I'm just going to click and remove. So now my layers are labeled. So we've got the images inside of our flip chart. Now we need to include the scientific names. So we'll just click on text and we'll come over here and we'll just, just kidding, I don't know all these scientific names by heart. So I'm going to go to Active Inspire. I'm going to hide. And before I started this video, I actually went out and found the scientific names. So the way I picked the animals was actually on purpose. So I'm just going to highlight and copy. And you can just do Control C or Command C on a Mac. Or you can go up to Edit copy. I'm going to go inside of Inspire and I'm just going to paste. Now when I paste this, notice I get my scientific name. And that's for elephant. And then we'll go back and we'll do a scientific name for swan this good and if I want notice these names are kind of small so I could always choose my text tool double click on them and change the font so I can get something a little bit more you know, professional looking or scientific looking um, and change the size there we go there I go, I'll give American Typewriter 36, and I'll move this down. Now I'll go ahead and double click here, highlight, I'll just change these to the same. American Typewriter, size 36, expand this out, move this over. Okay, I need to continue on, so I'll go to Word again. And I'll just copy the next one, which is the scientific name for chicken. We'll paste this. Oops, I was highlighted on this word. I won't click off of it. Paste. We'll do American typewriter and 36. Since this is such a long name, I'm going to leave this in two layers. Okay, so just so the image covers it. And now the last one is the clownfish. So I'll go over, I'll grab copy, and one more time, paste. Edit the text, which by the way, you notice I've been using the text tool to highlight. I can just select the object, and up in this toolbar above the object, I have this button here which allows me to edit text. So I can do that right within the select tool, highlight, and change my font and font size. So I don't necessarily have to select the, the text tool in order to edit my text. Okay, so now I'm finished with that. So I've got all my texts laid out here, and it's above the image, which is not what I want to do. I actually want my text to be behind the images. Okay, so we need to fix that. Over in the layers palette, notice my texts are labeled text 1, text 2, text 3, text 4. Well, I don't know what these are just by looking at them. 
So I'm going to click on one, and I'm just going to double click and rename this. Elephant name. This one is my swan name. Double click on this one, and this is a chicken name. Double click on my last one, and this is clownfish name. Okay. Good. So now I've got clownfish, swan, elephant. If I want the text to be behind the image, we have to adjust it in the layers palette. If you remember back from previous videos, I discussed about undergarments and your pants and your coats and shirts and how that worked on the body. Well, again, remember this works the same way. Whatever's on top is what I see. So if I go to highlight these and I can hold down the shift key to select them all or I can do them one at a time. So I can just click on one. I can drag it up above my text layers. Or like I said, I'm going to hold down shift key. I'm going to select them all. And I'm going to click and drag them up and above the text. Now the text is behind the photos, which is what I wanted. So if I move my photo, you can see my hidden text. I'm going to undo this. Now that this is set, the only thing left for me to do here is really make it so that the students can click on these images and then display the text behind it. That way when they make their guess or tell me what they think that it is the scientific name for these animals are we can click on it and they can reveal it and we can see if they were right but wait a minute I thought of a potential problem this text we don't want students to move we, we want that to stay in position so I'm going to undo that I'm going to go over here and I'm going to lock the text layers so since I really can't see the text behind here since it's behind the image, I can just come over to the layers palette, select one of the text layers. You notice it has the T beside it, and the image layers have a picture beside it. Just like that, click on this menu and just say locked. I'll do that for each of these. Locked. Locked. And locked. If I was to click on one of them again and click the arrow, you notice notice that I have the checkbox next to lock. That means the layer is actually locked. I could also go up to the objects, this bar, menu bar here, in between objects and hidden. I can slide this over and I can actually see the padlocks so that I know that those things cannot be moved. Alright, so now how do, we, how do we display the text behind the image? We actually need to use the action browser for that. So I'll come up here to the action browser and I'll scroll down till I find one that's called hidden. Which, by the way, up in the action browser, we can choose between our actions. All actions just list everything that's available. You have command actions, page action, object actions, voting actions, which you won't use much unless you have those active expressions or um, active votes, then document media actions. Well, since this is an object we're dealing with, we can choose object actions. Then we'll narrow down our list for us. Now you notice we have one called hidden. Okay, so if I choose hidden, it's going to say, what are we trying to hide? What's the target? So I'm going to click here, and I'm going to select it from the menu. Now this is where labeling those previous layers comes in handy, because if we know what our layers are labeled, we can select them quickly. If not, we can click on a layer and we can see an image of it over here or an example of it over here, but it's always easier if you know exactly what these things are, what these layers are, without actually having to look at the images. So for instance, I want to hide... Uh-oh, I'm making a mistake. You haven't caught it yet because I haven't shown you. I'm going to hit cancel and let me explain the mistake. Here's the mistake I'm making. This is asking me what am I wanting to hide? 
So I applied the action to an object and said I want to hide something and when I click on it it's going to hide whatever the target is. Here's the problem. What I have selected right now is my text underneath the photo. So by applying the action to this it's saying when I click on this text I want you to hide whatever my target is. Well my text is behind my photo so this won't work because I'm not going to click on the text. So I actually need to click on the photo which is my clownfish and now I need to re repeat those steps. So I'll go to Object Actions. I'll scroll down until I see Hidden. And it'll say, what do you want to hide? What's your target? Well, I want to hide the clownfish picture. So when I click on the clownfish picture, I want it to hide itself. So I'll say OK. And now the most important step is we actually have to click Apply Changes. If we don't, then this will not work. So I'll say Apply Changes. Now, let me just jump off here and show you what this does. So I'm going to click over here. And if I come over to my clownfish, notice I have a little play icon next to my cursor. It disappears when I'm off. If I click on it, oh, it disappears. If I click in the space where the picture was, it reappears. So I can hide and reveal. So now we'll just apply the same action to the other images. So I'm going to click on an image. We'll go down to Hidden. I'll choose my target, and this time my target is the chicken picture. I'm going to say OK. Apply Changes. I'll click on the elephant picture. Go to Hidden. Choose my target. What am I hiding? I'm hiding the elephant picture. Say OK. Apply Changes. We'll click on the swan, go to hidden, choose our target, choose swan, we'll say OK, and now we're all done. Okay, so now if I click on each of these images, it disappears and it displays the scientific name. Okay, nice. Wait a minute, that one didn't work. Why didn't it work? Well, it didn't work because previously when I was doing all of these actions, applying all these actions, I forgot to hit Apply Changes. So let's repeat that step again. Hopefully you caught that when I, when I did that. But if you didn't, don't worry about it. This may happen to you. We'll click on the photo. We'll choose Hidden. Change our target. What are we trying to hide? Well, when I click on the swan, I want to hide the swan. So we'll say OK apply changes. Now if I click off you'll notice now it works. Okay, so like any other flip chart we need to label this so I'm going to add some text. I'll come up here and I'll click and I'll add some text and maybe since we did it in the previous theme I'll come down and choose chalk duster. Size 36 will change the color here to the orangish color. Now we'll say tell me the scientific name. Let's make it more of a challenge. Let's say can you tell me the scientific name and we'll say that's a question so bam. Alright so now our flip chart is complete. Now this isn't the prettiest layout you could take time and lay this out so that it looks nicer but we've actually got some images in here it's interactive our students can guess a word or guess the scientific name we can reveal it and show it to the students. Okay, so this should help you out. You can use this in a lot of ways. Maybe you're naming presidents and you want to um, display the name of the president. Um, that's fine. You can have it hide different objects. So, for instance, maybe I click on the picture and it displays the name. Okay, I'll show you how to do that real quick because I want to show you how to move images. So, real quick, notice this. 
if I click on the selection tool and I try to drag this swan now, it works okay, but the action is still applied. So if I mess up, it hides the swan. So if we want to get rid of these actions and stop this from happening, up in the upper right hand corner you get this blue atomic symbol. If you click on this, it turns all the actions off. So now if I just click on the image, it's no longer got the action applied to it. It's not going to hide. Notice even my locked layers, I can now move because I'm in design mode now. Okay, I've turned everything off. Nothing's working, so it's good. So I can also click on here now. And since the action is not being applied and it's not hiding, I can remove the existing action on it. Okay, so I'm going to turn design mode off. I'm back in normal mode. If I click on my image this time, and I go to hidden, so I'm going to choose object actions. I'm going to go up to hidden. I'm going to apply a different action. I'm going to say, what do I want you to hide when I click on the face? I want it to hide the name for Swan. So we'll say, okay, we'll apply the changes. Now we can right click on the name of the Swan and we can choose, oops, gotta select first, and I can't. Oh no, it's because it's locked. Okay, so I can either unlock the layer or I can go to design mode. Now I can click on it, right click on the name of the swan, and then we'll choose hidden. And now we'll get out design mode. Okay, what that does is that makes it so that when we start this flip chart, the names are all hidden. Now when the students click on the name of the picture, I see the name below it. Click on it again, the name goes away. So I've kind of reversed the order a little bit. Rather than it being visible but hidden behind the picture, it's invisible and not hidden. So again, if I was doing name the president and I had all the president's faces on the slideshow, I could say, well, who do you think this president is? And then we could click on the face and it would reveal the name underneath it. So that about wraps it up for this page in the flip chart. Hopefully you got something very useful out of this and in the next lesson we'll start talking about containers and what containers are. See you next time.